Yeah, I think you should try again. Because remember, you did the Halloween or the holiday episode introducing. Yeah, here you go. It's your this introduction. is your good. Me, I have to. No pressure. But... Yep. What's well, just on the spot here? Now I just got to do it. <clears throat> yep. Yeah. Be sure to speak up, both of you guys. <clears throat> Feel like I'm always louder. Direct your vocals at yeah, the tail. Stage right. Yeah. Talk into the horse's anus. <laughs> It's your boys and I am Jay, we shut it down Man, a comic book, look, invade your town Keep it comics, Keep it comics. and let the beer flow Pizza Global, Global, since our premiere show. premiere show Riverdale Studios on fire, we don't know where to park Technology and booze, it's like we're rolling out like Tony Stark Tony Skylar, Skylar, Tom, and Skylar John, Tom and John, we the bestest, the bestest. Swag so villainous, so please arrest us arrest Anuses, welcome to a comic book look, ladies and gentlemen. Hey, it is your weekly, <laughs> mostly weekly comic book show. We've been weekly for a long time now. We've been, we've been, we're back. Awesome. Yeah, we're back. Say we're like, yeah. freaking, we got like an yeah. eight probably issues weekly. So. Well, it, it feels weird to me because uh, we've been spreading out the editing. Yes, exactly. Uh, you haven't been editing. Yeah. You've been slacking on your pimp, and me and John have been well, doing all the issues. You've you've done a lot of the ones recently, but it's a lot less prevalent in my mind when I don't have to actually go through and edit the videos. Kind of like you guys before, you know. Is you just came here, you sat down in front of the camera, you did the spiel, and you sent the video home with me. But anyway, we this get is it back Tom three days after the due date, and it on my left, wouldn't work right. John on my right. I'm Skyler. <laughs> We're your team, number one heroes in comic book journalism land. Yeah, it's something like that, right, Sky? That was awesome. No, yes, that's a great inter. That's a great great introduction. Intro. Sky, well, Sky, put Sky that does on your resume. Sky I was writing that all that. day long. I've been in my car. It's his first time swerving off Second. the road, just. But it's well, they, they it's... dropped it on me at forty-five seconds on the camera, and I think I started at like <coughs> one thirty on the camera. So I had forty-five seconds to come up with that. You did a good job. The the interns are actually all goggly eyed out here in awe of yeah. the progress that Skylar has made with his promotions, the studio. He stopped Jack and Diamonds from the Diamond Encrusted yeah. Penny Machine that dispenses beer. Even put one back. Even put one back. God bless us all. We know it was him. They strive to be like Skylar, but none of the current interns, I doubt, will ever see like the Skylar. camera time. We'll see. Yeah, I'm talking to you. <laughs> Shut up. Okay. Right on set. But anyway, this is like issue 96 or something around 97. there. 97. 97. And, uh, you know, we're going to do, do straight comic book reviews and some other cute. fun different things for you guys. And uh, John, looks like you got enough comic books over there, and I got a few comic books. I have got to tell you guys, though, before I jump into this, yeah. it's been, I have been, like, freaking so swamped. I actually... It's new comic book day today. Yeah. Haven't picked up new comics. What? Last Wednesday, I still haven't picked up new comics from You're last fired. Wednesday. Oh, and then I'd be fired too. Never so that, that is, uh, yeah. Since you haven't picked up comics from last Wednesday, 2009, um, I think we're safe. And oh, remember, uh, that, remember that Deadpool four four book series end. That's that's when I stopped buying books. <laughs> well, yeah, that one. I feel that way too sometimes. Right? Yeah. yeah. But yes, and so I had family in town, and yada yada yada. Yeah, yeah. I haven't picked up so, but That's I still had a bunch of comics I hadn't read, so I got to read a bunch of good comics. Um, and I started with this book that I got a, quite a while back, quite a ways back. I actually got this at Last Stop CD Shop, which is our like cheap comic, yep. our cheap used bookstore CD shop and um, video game store. And this actually was probably featured on one of your your segments of the uh, yeah. cheap books at used bookstores. Exactly. Still Check out your local used yeah. bookstore. And I bet, I, yeah, I bet, yeah. you know, I was excited to get it. It's $8. I mean, yeah. look at, you guys know I like a good hardcover. I mean, it was and originally it's like 20 bucks. in good shape, yeah. too. That oh, cover really looks freaking beautiful. It's so cool. It's, like, the binding looks really awesome. You know, I like that to yeah. look good on my bookshelf. Yeah. 
it's different, you know, shape than what a normal comic is. You know, probably normally look like this, and we got it like this, which is cool. Half newspaper page. Yeah, and, and I and I and I like it. And you know, looking through a guy with a gun, looking very noir. Um, guy with a gun on the back. Uh, you find out it's the same guy, and you see their time. This is like an homage to tons of different eras of comics. Um, and it goes through, and it's about a guy, um, the spook, and he is the, the spook is the cop, and he's, arch ne nemesis is Mr. Murder, and they go throughout the, their lives how Mr. Murder murders people, and the spook can never quite catch him. Okay. In the end, um, they start with Mr. Murder, it looks as if Mr. Murder has died, and the spook didn't kill him, and he's really old and washed up and grumpy. And so what they try to do is bring you through these different times, and uh, I just got to say, like, I was so excited for it. I got into it, and, like, the person who's writing it just does, and it was, uh, oh, yeah, I got to say, too, Brent um, Sconover, he's at, like, he's been at Spring Con and Fall Con. He's a Minneapolis artist, so I was really cool. excited about that as well. I you know, published for from Archaea, but it fucking sucked. It was one of the worst books I've ever read. Oh, I mean, no. this... I was so disappointed. The person who wrote this had such a big idea for they're going to do this big murder mystery. They're going to have some underlying things going on. Um, there's going to be a big twist. They try to play with transgender a whole bunch. Um, it's like what? way too, too much for maybe a person who's never done comics before because the storytelling, I mean, it just was not clear. It was not clearly done. The dialogue was terrible. I know sometimes... Um, you know, it was supposed to be an homage to these times that the dialogue was different, but it was a mm -hmm. terrible homage. And I, and so like me getting this, like, I am so ready to just, you just, you only have to even be halfway good for me to be like, I fucking had a great time reading this book, you know? Yeah. yeah. And exactly. I, In this case, it didn't matter. It didn't matter. Even though the art is awesome. And, and then it, it is so cool, like and, almost Dick Tracy style. Yeah, and yeah, well, he right. took a bunch from Dick Tracy. Then they have, to, yeah, different types. Like they do four color comics, yeah. and then that's like the throwback of old spook stories with Mister Murder. That's cool. And then the next page it goes into like more, Rainy. way more modern. Yeah. You know, it has modern colors and yeah, you know, dark. Um, yeah, I mean, yeah. it's just uh, cartoony, classic but classic noir. Yeah. comic look like a uh, hundred bullets. Exactly, but it's a little more cartoony, yeah. and but more animation style. But you can tell it um, the art is just fine. The art was fine, and the setup is really cool, and how it switches back and forth. Like you know, so here's the four color, and then it switches back into the real story, and it goes through, and then it has these different chapters and fun games in between, and all this stuff is really cool yeah. to make up a comic that I just want to get behind. Yeah. And so, you know. I don't know. I read at the end this guy who wrote it, um, Victor um, Quinez. <laughs> What's that? Did he apologize or something? Or what? He should have. But he said something <laughs> like sorry. he's a Brooklyn based filmmaker, screenwriter, and commercial director. Uh, Mr. Murder is Dead is Victor's first graphic novel. And I mean, you can just tell. Yeah. So they, oh, he, so you know, he did his other even things. Even those cartoony, those weren't like a strip he did or anything like that there was just something that he wanted to make part of the yeah. comic that way specifically yep yeah, he specifically wrote it this way oh, so okay. that's what i'm saying he had all these good ideas and then he could just not get his dialogue correct for comic books it was trying to be something different like he was writing it in a book um there was sometimes there was a, like a bunch of like periods and wrong places in the word bubbles and stuff and it just you know, like when you do dialogue, normally, you know, if you're going to have periods in the word bubbles, it's going to, it, I mean, it should be rare, first of all. And then, you know, it needs to be really on point and still sound like a dialogue. Um, usually, instead of having a period, you would have a new word bubble, um, is how they usually do it in modern story. And I just have to say usually, because it's not always. But, you know, just having this, having such a cool setup and, you know, wanting to back this book and... You know, I should have known because Jeff Loeb gives it a good review and an opening, and I fucking hate Jeff Loeb. <laughs> so I should have known right from there that uh, that's what that was going to happen. But um, Mr. Murder is Dead, um, I don't do this often, indie book. One beer out of six. Do we need to fire up the Lazarus pit? Uh, we may need to. Actually, I... we can't because the art is too awesome, and the concepts are so say, good. I'm... 
and it's I would so I would love to have Brent just going over sign it. I mean, because and I would even like like I mean that's this is like this is the seventies. Um, Mr. Murder, and he's totally 70s, and this oh, is like yeah. the 70s, and so like the art is really cool, but it's just simply the dialogue and storytelling um, was, I think, just too much to um, try to put together okay. um, for this guy on his first shot out there. Okay. I'm sure his movies and stuff are better, at least I assume so, that's how he got this job, I'm assuming, so, yeah. but yeah, disappointing, dog. So if we could get the artist to sign it, and he said, Tom, I'm sorry... Would that kind of make it... The artist doesn't need to apologize, because I would give the art, you know, a good four out of six beers. Okay. Okay. Um, yeah, I mean, especially even, like, this, This I kind of think is really cool, the, uh, yeah, it's just the, a fun the progression from the front to the back, like, you see that you're going to get to see this guy, like, really grow old mm -hmm. from his middle age to old back. age. And, you and know, the, the cover art good. and the design, yeah, exactly, it's all so cool, and you, it just makes you want... It's like Tropical Dick old Dick Sega Dick. and Nintendo games when they made really sweet pictures that had nothing to do with the game whatsoever. Yeah, agreed. but that's not why you bought them. But yeah, I was wondering when this came out, because I mean, obviously, like I said, I bought it at used bookstores, so this isn't like new, so you won't like yeah, find no. it. Yeah, no. 2011. Also, actually, kind of new. Yeah, so I guess, you know, <laughs> well, you know, two years old. But yeah, there you go, John. Brighten our days. Give us some... Turn these clouds Good luck. into sunshine with some great comics. Well, let's talk great comics sunshine. then. That's sunshine. What I have in my hand does not fall into that category, <laughs> but bear with me, ladies and gentlemen. Marvel Comics brings, of course, one of the loves in my life. He opens my beers for me sometimes. He'll destroy a world or two if I, you know, yeah. if I beg him. He'll be friend of Silver Surfer. Exactly. <laughs> Oh, man, we're talking about the hunger issue number three, you guys. We're talking about, I am so sick of this red banner on the bottom, and I'm also sick of Age of Ultron Aftermath. There's no such thing as Age of Ultron. The event didn't happen. It was a piece of shit event. <laughs> Done. I stopped at book, what, two or three? Yep. Jumped off. That Reality banner. is what you make of it. Right. That's right. Right. So, basically, it's just more nonsense. Galactus has merged with the Galactus Swarm. To destroy the Marvel U slowly and painfully, which is kind of like how exciting this book is. It's like watching paint dry on the wall. Um, there's not really a lot going on. It's kind of like, kind of like all the coverage right now about the government. You know what I mean? Like, they're, it's just stupid. The whole situation's stupid. It makes me mad. I'm not going to get into that. But this book makes me mad. It's just, it's dumb. I don't know why it's happening. I don't get it. There it is, folks. John calls Marvel the government. They will be shutting down soon. Exactly. You heard it here first. Comic book life. Comic Marvel book shutting life down. Exclusive. So, anyways, I'm not even going to. I'm not. I'm not picking up future issues of this series. First of all, because oh, what? I'm, I'm thoroughly disappointed. I really am. What, are, what issue are you on? Three. three. So, you're on three. You're not picking up. Because no. I don't care. It, it doesn't matter to Didn't me. Didn't you kind of like the first two issues? Oh, yeah, because I was excited about Ultimate U being yeah. destroyed. But now all it is is Galactus like, I am big and powerful, and I have a ton of little drone things that have my name spelled into, like, syllables and stuff. <laughs> like, really original Marvel. <laughs> you know, um, Rick Jones saving the Ultimate U. Get out of here. Yeah. Get out of here. On. This he's, book is a waste of time. Jones, bitch. Um, the artwork is okay. It's cool to see Galactus and Silver Surfer and all that yada yada. But honestly, I'm right with Tom. This is getting a one out of six, and it discontinued from the show. John, I asked working. for a goddamn I'm uplifting. So, this was on the top of my stack. You know, comic book lookers, I want to. I just want to so apologize here rain. for you guys having to go through the negative Nancy that we're pulling down here in this opening bit. So I'm going to switch that these frowns. Upside okay, down. down with oh. boom, 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 a new image, number one comic book. And we got what is going on, bro? zero, number one, dude. Whoa. Zero, number one. And you know, you it's want something to be good. Uh, this is where I heard this guy from, uh, Alice Cott. Uh, Wild Children. I bought this on Free Comic Book Day because nice. I had a bunch of Wild Children with me. I Wait, just thought it was you... fitting. Bought it on free comic book day. That's yeah. Yeah. Well, hey, well, Skyler seems a little redundant. They, I know. I understand check, free they, comic book day. They want to still make money, like because you know um, comic shops are like like to stay in business and like uh, retails about like uh, you know profits. I'll explain that to you later. So yeah, 
Um, <laughs> when you go on Free Comic Book Day, yeah. you don't just get to take everything in the store for but free. But you should. Is this, be... is this this whole, like, make more than you spend thing you'll... you've been trying to tell me about? Yeah, I've told you about it, but <laughs> okay. you know, you'll get it one of these days. Anyway. We'll work on it. Matt's Wild Children, it was <laughs> super awesome. And actually, I bought this for Riley Rossimo's art. Yeah. And then the writing was so good that I was, um, you know, I was on board. I bought Change, which was really out there in meta in different ways that I didn't... I mean, it was, maybe that's the wrong term, but I just didn't really like it. Um, like, But you could still tell it was really strong writing. They're trying... He's trying to do different things. Well, Zero is awesome. Okay, this is just a number one, and this is a book about two like bioengineered people fighting it out in a man who... Um, has to steal this um, the technology from one of the guys um, that are fighting it out, and it is like I probably would have bought that book if I saw that cover. Oh yeah, I mean the, co sweet cover, the cover is so cool. That's not and the then, guy that did Super Jail, is it? <laughs> no, <laughs> it looks like it, dude. But it is awesome. Okay, so then it goes in, and this book has no ads. The very front cover starts the story. Not even a. A, you Not know, credits page, the back one, paper. It, the end story on the very back. You get your credits on the back cover because they, like, weren't going to waste any any, yeah, any money on anything else. Um, okay. It starts out with a man sitting on a ledge, a little boy about to shoot him in the back of his head, and he says, let me tell you a story first. Oh. And then, so I'm assuming he is, like, zero. Um, he is this... He is what we would call zero, and all of this these issues are going to be different stories of what he did because this is a one and done. That's right, motherfuckers. I haven't talked about him forever. Yeah, you know I love him. Yeah. I miss him from Jonah Hex. Yeah. I am the one and done guy, Planetary, my favorite. Why do we not have comic books doing one and done stories every time? Well, it looks like we're going to get it back here, folks. You yeah. can pick up any single one of these doesn't matter and you're going to enjoy it and i've been waiting for this but you can still tell it's going to have a connecting storyline because the zero is going to be in all these different ones but every other character besides zero in this story they're out i mean it has nothing to do with it anymore he's they're killing out, people all the time they're dead they're dead they're all um dead. like he at first reservoir he's, dogs they're all gone if you at first you think he's like part of the military and then he's like i just need to get over here the guy's like, well, what class are you? And he's like, I'm in this class. Just let me through. He's like, what are you doing? He's like, I had to take a shit. I just got to go. Let me through here. He's like, well, I can't. And then the guy's just like, dude, I didn't want to do this to you. Okay. And I was like, oh, okay. So, well, maybe he's not so good. You know? Yeah. And then um, the, he, like, sees innocent people. And he's like, well, tch, I can't believe they didn't get everybody out. That pisses me off. Should I just kill him now? And because I think he knew later that, you know, something possibly bad could happen to them. Um, but obviously this zero guy is very smart. Um, who knows what's going on with this cliff? Um, you end it, the end it has nothing to do back with the cliff. It's about him and setting a bomb and, um, closing down the first story. But image number one, Alice Cott, Michael Walsh, Jordy, Jordy Belair and Clayton Cowles, um, is the team on this. And, you know, I just, God damn it, image, you did it again. Jerks. So yeah, that should have brought you guys up, and I really suggest you guys to read this. Um, it's, yeah, the yeah, art right is it. just great, especially the cover on this thing. Yeah. is awesome. The cover, I'm pretty sure this got this has to be like Frank quietly. I would assume. I don't know, but let's see. Probably the writer. No, this is Michael Walsh. Yeah, I guess. It, yeah, he did the cover too. No, this would be Chris Burnham. Yep, the, I got cover C. It looks like because um, this is definitely Chris. Burnham, variant covers, huh? Who is, uh, yeah, a bunch <laughs> of stupid variants. Um, but, because he does Batman Incorporated, so that's why I recognize it. And he totally has a Frank Quietly style. But anyway. What do you yeah. rate it? Oh, yeah, ratings. Ratings. Six ratings. beers out of six beers. The full six pack, my friends. Hey, drink up. Whoa. I drink Pop a top, tip uh, one back. Yep. <laughs> Straight vodka, I swear, guys. Come on, believe me. I'd cook ram right here. Tom just got back from visiting visiting Russia. So yeah, I only drink vodka. The vodka. The vodka. Well done. All right, come on. Do Let's it. go. Let's do it. Keep it going, John.
Alright, I'm gonna kind of so. bundle these next two together. Oh, actually. you do it. A triple trip? No, just double trip, man. Oh, double trip. All right. double, so these, double trip, these, man. These both came out today. Oh, um, double. What do I know about things coming out, right? I walked into Tom's house with my fly down, for God's sake. Um, I got <laughs> two, two books of He's all He's trying new. to show my wife his wang. I seriously walked in, and Jen was like, nice, nice that your zip's down. I was like, lol, I totally just walked in and bought beverages at the grocery store. Anyways, you know me, exhibitionist. Um, all new X-Men uh, issue 17. This is chapter 6 of the Battle of the Atom, the biggest thing. We're trying to avoid talking about the event. I'm just going to talk about the issue as a whole here very vaguely because I can't talk about much. So I'm just going to say this. This was a pleasant read. I enjoyed it. It's nice to finally have something in my stack from Marvel with a pair of balls. I enjoy it. It's fun. Um, it's it's a new look on some of my favorite characters. I've been reading a lot of the old X-Team stuff, so it's cool to see where we're going with it. And it's an entertaining story. I'll talk more about the story as a whole later. So with that, I'm probably going to give this one a 4 out of 6. Oh, quick quick rating. I like quick, it. Okay. Quick rating. But this one fascinated me and also did not at the same time. All new X Men special, and this is a one one off. Oh, one um, shot! But it's the okay. Arms of the Octopus, part one of three. So obviously, Doc Ock is Spider Man. I know. Okay, got it. So the cool thing about this is this is actually a uh, kind of a look at four of the five original X Men just dilly dallying around New York and freaking out, of course, because they're young in a way different world. Um, I really love the focus on young Beast, young Hank McCoy, because he is good looking. Hitting on the chick in the park, she's studying, you know, and he walks up like, yo, hey. And then he reveals that he's a mutant, yo, and she, she thinks it's cool. Um, then there's a uh, there's a Dr. Octopus ripoff that appears, and they start fighting him. Um, and then Spider-Man, which is actually Dr. Octopus, shows up and is like, this is obviously a forgery, blah, blah, blah. So the book basically ends on this event of, you know, where did the, the clone octopus come from? Um... The shields, like, we're going to call him the Hulk. So the next one is a Hulk one-shot special. So this event is pretty much just kind of a cash cow, um, which I think is completely stupid. Par for the course for Marvel? Par for the course. Yeah. So what was this? It looks really... like it's working. Right. But <laughs> you I'm... picking up the John's next thing? get him. No, I'm not. Yeah, you are. No, I'm totally not. Yes, you I are. I promise you, I'm not. Uh, John's because... just going to go stand there and read them in the comic book store. And I'm not going to buy them, though. Clear. I'm serious. <laughs> like, I was just kind of like, oh, man. But, I, you know, it was cool to get to see the young character, young young Beast, sure. young everybody. Even Iceman looks like he's, like, super young in this. It's hilarious. So, it was cool. It was a fun read. So do they run in, like, the current day people? Or is it in the certain same continuity? Does it it's be... in the same continuity, but not really, because all this stuff's happening right now in this event that I can't talk about. Why can't so you talk about it? Because we're talking about the event as a whole. Oh, that, yeah, in Battle Infinity. of Adam. Okay, yeah, yeah, sorry, yeah, yeah. Da, 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 da. So. Hey, Battle of Adam episode coming soon. Coming soon, to be revealed. To be revealed. To an episode of Comic Book Week near you. Oh. All right. Okay, my turn. All right. No, I'm gonna derail you for whoa, a little bit here because uh, whoa, did you read got... a comic book? No, we just whoa. got a new uh, new release on Netflix. Uh, the next episode of Comic Book Men. All right, has yeah. showed up, and we still have kind of the uh, Pawn Stars feel, the comic book of Pawn Stars feel that around. going on. But no. in the second season, we have a lot more of the shenanigans, like the silly, totally. like clerk style stuff. Like one of the recent ones, you, if you've seen the show, Ming, the Asian guy that works in the show, and uh, Mike, totally white, the white older guy, not yeah, the Mike Zaps, not the older owner of the show, or not the is Walt, okay, manager so, of the yeah store, but the yeah one of his workers. Uh, they lost a bet on who could go to an auction. And get more uh, comic book paraphernalia and acquire the most money off of it. So they had to reenact uh, the Fantastic Four Fantastic wedding. Fantastic Four wedding. Four wedding. Yep. That's what it was, yeah. And then they had uh, Ming dress up as <laughs> Sue Storm <laughs> blue lipstick. and put blue <laughs> lipstick on him for no reason. Yeah, <laughs> I mean it was it was, and they had people come in. I mean it was absolutely absurd. But yeah, comic book men. Um, you know, <laughs> it, it when it first came out, I hated it. Um, I actually love it now. My favorite podcast is TESD, Tell Them Steve Dave, and it has Brian Johnson, the guy, big guy with the beard, then Walt, the owner of the store, or I mean not the owner, Kevin Smith owns it, but he's the manager, the yeah. guy who runs the store, 
Um, and then um, Brian Quinn, who is uh, from Impractical Jokers, the guy who always wears the hat from Impractical yeah. Jokers. And they have a podcast, which is fucking awesome, even though John hates podcasts. That is, was cut out. Maybe you guys will hear his rant on podcasts in the future someday. But um, last week, uh, John made his... You know, very clear what he felt about podcasts. Then John edited the show and he made it very clear to us that he didn't want anybody to know how he felt about podcasts. And so anyway, um, tell him Steve Davis is my favorite podcast. And so I love Comic Book Men. I've watched all those episodes already before they came out on Netflix because, I mean, I'm, I'm a huge fan. Um, even though the show does have that Pawn Star feel and they try to have, like, idiots come in there and you can tell that, you know, it's just, like, formulatic in a lot of ways. Yeah, just um, it's a lot of stage stuff when yeah. someone comes in to sell something. But, it's, yeah. but you know, like, what are you going to do? It's, it's still fun when you get, like, them making fun of Ming, which is always fun. Uh, Brian Johnson just, you know, always at this, they have to, like, play this character like he works at the store, which he does not work at the store. Like, yeah. he's not, he's just, like... He's just there, yeah. like, hanging around. He's just Walt's best friend and Kevin's best friend from forever, so then they just have him there. And he's, like, I mean, he's Steve Dave from All Rats, and um, Walt is fanboy from um, Mall Rats, and yeah. so, like, I don't know. Uh, <laughs> it's just funny that... Like, they have to play that Ming works there as well. Ming does not work at the comic book shop. Ming runs all the, uh, runs the whole Smodcast internet site, has developed every single website for Kevin Smith. He runs all technology for I didn't know that, web. and that makes a lot Kevin more Smith, sense as he, why he, yeah. He, was, he got his job because in, like, 1995, he started a Kevin Smith um, fan um, boards, and then got Kevin got a hold of them, liked it. It became the View Askew boards. And he's ran them ever since. He's just worked for Kevin. And so now they have him, like, working the comic book story. And it's like, obviously, he does he... I mean, like, the kind of shit that... It's, yeah. I mean, he probably makes, like, two hundred, you know, fifty thousand dollars a year just in his regular job. He's not selling comic books. But um, it's funny that, you know, they pull it in for this, like, fake characters. Yeah. Just so they can do the shenanigans on the side. And, I, and, I, and the... Conversation. It's just like a Kevin Smith movie. You know, the dialogue is just really what makes it. Yeah. So. Oh, it is, and it's it's hilarious. I mean, I think it's funny, and I, yeah. and for how much shit I talked about it, um, you know, I was an, I mean, I feel like an asshole because like, I really love the show now. Yeah, and it's if you like Kevin Smith, you can't help but like it, especially after. Get through the, probably the first season, and then. Well, the thing was, the first season they were hour long episodes, yeah. and then the second season they became half hour episodes, which is so, so much smarter. They don't need you don't need an hour of it; you need a half yeah, hour exactly. at a time. And then if you want another hour, you or if you want an hour, you can watch it on Netflix and you get three episodes done in an hour. You know, so um, no, but it's fun. I like also they don't have like the you know like all reality shows. And Pawn Star shows have like the guy goes into a studio and then they do a one on camera and he's like, Well, Pop came in this morning eating eggs and I couldn't believe it. You know, like they have like the so, interview style. Yeah. And they don't ever do that. Any of the any of the things that they like bring in for comments is like when they're around a podcasting table yeah. at the end. And I mean it's like at least it's a little different, you don't have to deal with that shit. But, and then those are, I believe, actual episodes of the Smodcast. No, those are not Smodcast. Secret Stash. Yeah, Secret Stash podcast. And so, yeah, Smodcast is with him and his buddy Mosher, who, like, produces all the movies. Yeah. And he's producing that um, Thanksgiving it's usually just movie, but... Two-thirds of the show is a laughing fit. Mm -hmm. But... <laughs> it's because they're so stoned. It's, and it, and, and it's it, pretty and funny. They and they're both the fun really funny, actually. And I so. know, but, like, so much cock jokes that, like, you can... I mean, like... Always about cock, but it is so funny. All right. Anyway, enough talking about cock, Tom. I love Let's myself and cock. But anyway, that was a good segment. I'm glad we got to talk about comic book, man, because I wanted to get that off my chest. I felt guilty talking shit about it. I know a lot of people do talk shit about it. I want to say fuck you because I really like it. I know John doesn't like it. I can tell by so him just keeping completely fuck silent you and not past Tom. smiling and shaking his head. <laughs> So, John, what do you think about Comic Book Man? Man. Let, don't, don't hold back. Act like Captain Cummins was here backing you up. Huh? He, he yeah, you guys felt back. like he could get all after me when he's around. He wouldn't, <laughs> he wouldn't be backing me up on this, but I'm sure. But I, I'm just not crazy, man. I'm not crazy about it. I don't know. What didn't you like about it? Give me some... 
It's just, everyone's like, you know, a lot of people are just like, oh, Kevin, I'm like, uh, you know, I'm sure he's a cool guy. I'd have a beer with him and talk shit and talk shop. Yeah. But you're not, like, a like fan him. of his movies or but anything? I'm not a fan of his movies. I'm not going to go out of my way. And if I saw him, I'd be like, what up? And that's it. <laughs> you know? Yeah. I don't know. It's too bad, man. Yeah. No, I'm just kidding. I well, know. that's I part mean, of I it, too, because like... a lot of his, like, dialogue structure and right. stuff. Like, if you like Kevin Smith, you like Kevin Smith. But if you don't, like, right. this still isn't going to appeal to you. No. So. And that's just, that's just me, though, you know? Yeah. So, I don't know. I mean, the way I see it... I got 20 hats, 20 pairs of shades. You got one jersey. <laughs> <laughs> That's the way I see it. That's how John sees it. You know, he looks at it all day. <laughs> hey, I am sick of, you know, Kevin, you can you can switch up the hockey jersey and jean shorts. I mean, but that's the his only thing. man. That's his thing, the you know? only man that I want to see in jean shorts is my man right here, John Ryan. <laughs> he always rocks a bomb. Also, second other guy that I'd love to see in jean shorts, John Cena. God damn it. He always kicks the shit out of dudes in WWE and Gene Shorts. True. Good name, too. I feel like he'd get yeah, a lot of wider oh, range of motion with a different fabric. But he's anyway. not, not his boss. I'm sorry, though, Tom. I don't mean to, you know. All right. Rain on the parade. Yeah. Just rain us yeah, down that's, here. That's just, what, tires. that's just what you do, though, right? No, I'm just kidding. Okay, guys. Yo. If you have kids around, shield their eyes. But look at this crazy sex scene. What? So this is a God is dead. Those are all the people, are the sex slaves that are getting ready for Zeus, or for Odin, I think, actually. Um, and uh, this is God is dead. From... We didn't get to see the sex scene. Oh, yeah. You, here, I'll show yeah, you guys. Why can't right we here. see it? There you go. Oh, no, it's oh, not nice. Whoa, whoa. Um, well, that, yeah, that's, that's just some historical Well, yeah, value. that's not I actually... Chains. I mean, that's... If you wanted to hear I see a good sex scene, actually, there is a better one in this one. Look at you the get, table spread. You get full... Wow. I forgot to show you guys. You get full cock in this one. Whoa, really? Yeah, full like, cock. Whoa. Seems like old, old businessman cock. Oh, whoa. Uncut, whoa. too. Oh, wow. <laughs> wow. Um, Nowadays, it's all lock them in a cube with a simulator. Uh, so this is book God is Dead. John Hickman, my man, and we got um, Mike Costa. I don't know if you guys remember, but I was all up on his shit after that GI Joe. I fucking loved Costa. I was excited for like Smoke and Mirrors. It disappointed me a little bit. I was excited for one of his New Fifty Two books. It disappointed me a little bit. Um, but I like to see this because he's back, baby. You can tell that Hickman had the idea. Costa's doing the dialogue, is what I'm assuming. Um, and it, this is uh, a book that is called God is Dead. All of the real gods one day just decide to show up. And by real gods, I mean the myth mythological ones. Odin, Zeus. Um, like, so by real gods, you mean the fake gods? Yeah, yeah I'll read them all. <laughs> I didn't know that. Um, I'll read them all to you. Okay. What'd you, what were you going to say? You didn't know? Oh, that? I didn't know that um, Cyclops actually had a good posture. What's that? On the cover. Oh, so. <laughs> Yeah, you know, old man Cyclops. Old man. So, like, all, all so we get Horus, Anubis, Bast, Quetzalcoatl, Quetzalcoatl, Tetzapoka, Vishnu, Shiva, Brahma, oh, Zeus, Ares, the, Aphrodite. All of the gods. Yep. Any of the gods, and they all are ruled by Zeus. Has I mean, Odin has them come to a table. Um, even like there's Loki and like I mean they just all come to this one table at the end and they're like we're taking over shit and this is the exact words I can't wait to read these to you guys I am Odin honored guests our intrepid voyages to the realm of man have been ex mere scouting parties the bitch is ripe and wet and spread wide open for us let's take her that's what Odin says to all the gods that's about that's... fucking the world um, and then so about this about is about yeah, so this is like about like a <laughs> group of people that are gonna gonna fucking the smartest people around apparently um, it's gonna this Einstein looking guy which is weird because he already has an Einstein, he has actual Einstein in Manhattan Projects his other book um, this dorky guy this person who's like um, Dude, just Stephen loves Einstein Stephen Stephen Hawking he can only like type you know he has to like type out what he's gonna say or what, or what he wants you to hear. And uh, this crazy looking X Men looking lady, and they are gonna somehow kill all the gods, and that's what this is about. Is I'm assuming is trying to God is dead. They're gonna kill all the gods, and uh, yeah. So it's uh, oh, you yeah. know Cyclops cover. He he got the cover, Cyclops. which is cool. 
Um, but yeah, no, that's that's actually Zeus. And so, do you think that maybe he'll become Zeus? He killed Professor X. He might. I hope so. Okay. No, he won't. But uh, yeah, definitely, fucking great book. It was, um, you know, the art was a little off. I mean, it was still good for sure. Did you see but that was, sex scene? But it was a, a little off. Um, yeah. Well, how about this sex scene? I mean. We'll get back to this in a second, but <laughs> you know, just right there. from behind, you know, just, oh, oh wow, I didn't oh, see that. Oh, okay. Yeah, doing titty out. Um, Janet Jackson. Morning. So then, yeah, this book I'll give a four out of six beers. <laughs> it was uh, definitely good. It's a good premise. I'd like to see where it goes, I, and I'd like the art to be a little bit stronger. Yeah. Um, you get that great Jason Burroughs cover, and then that art doesn't transition exactly to the middle, but that's fine. Um, yeah. This is the sex scene I was talking about that I forgot to tell you guys about, Zero. See, a little, uh, looks like, um, doggy style, maybe anal. Um, going all the way through, little titty. Then this is the After Effects. You see that it's like this old ass fucking office guy? Yeah. Fucking hung like a horse. Yeah. You even get to see a little clip there. You That's know? The <clears throat> Legs spread wide open. Images? Image just does not fucking mind to just take it where. Where it needs to go. Exactly. And I love that. Which is over a desk. <laughs> exactly. I guess I don't know about Hungling the Horse. I was under the press. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm just, you know, I'm not, I mean, I'm, that's just a, just turn, you know. I'd say he'd probably be a statistical average. Oh, okay. Oh, my God, no. What? <laughs> All right, well, I have one more. Well, anyway, zero sex. Awesome. Yeah, you got a bunch more. John, no, finish it up. No. I'm all done, man. I'm spent. Forever Evil. Oh, nice. Yeah, I forgot guys, to read the first I one. I can't so. believe that DC actually rocked my socks this week. Yeah. Actually, yes, I can, because they've been doing it all month with Villains Month. Forever Evil issue to you guys. What a mean book. It's so great. The Teen Titans got schooled by the evil Flash person and then their miniature wasp as character, whoever the fuck that is. I don't know. I, I don't know that names too well yet. Yeah. Um, I think that Superwoman, which is actually Wonder Woman, this is Evil Justice League, it's kind of a pushover in this one. It needs to kind of stand up to Ultraman, which is the ripoff of Superman. All in all, though, very excited about things to come. Very excited about uh, Gotham. They're starting their own series coming up where the villains are going to be warring over the territory and stuff. So th it's kind of like a dark reign, but for DC. So yeah, this is, this is that's making your thing. DC fresh and relevant. Like, it's about <laughs> fucking time. I don't know how good it is. I, I'm going to buy it. I... I bought the first issue and then I didn't even fucking read it. I Dude, was like, I don't even out, want man. to read this. I what? It's amazing. But in this one, the Teen Titans are like, let's go after them. Two pages, I kid you not. Done. The whole team gets who's that? Into who's time. that girl to the right there? That's the, that's Superwoman. That's Wonder Woman. Oh, that's she's pretty, Superwoman. She's pretty hot. Kind of no, doesn't have green looking. hair though. I don't know. That no, was just kind of Zatanna looking. Nothing um, looks like Zatanna. I don't know. Anyways, um, I really, uh, what? <laughs> I hate to interrupt you, I was playing Pokemon Emerald the other day, and I bet you were. They're, they're one of the, it was like, cool trainer, Did Tina. Did you steal your daughter's came up. Game Boy, she grounded or something? No, I got a, this awesome app on my phone. <laughs> oh, okay. And, um, and it was like, cool trainer, Tina showed up, and then, uh, like, she had green hair, and I was like, Pfft. Screen print, you know, <laughs> definitely gonna save that one. <laughs> She and I got her name cool in my poke, or my what do you call it, Pokedex or whatever, or yeah. you know whatever match decks or whatever, so yeah. I can hopefully call her later. Yeah, be like hey, take her back to my tree fort. There you go. Get some what potions? Oh yeah, yes. dude. Handle my Pokeball. I got a, exactly. <laughs> I got a hyper potion for you, baby. Open Jeez. up. Love my Pokeballs. <laughs> <laughs> Oh man. oh, man. Tom just caught them all. Oh, yeah. man. Definitely. Oh, my God. She's going to catch them all in her mouth. <laughs> now <laughs> that we've <laughs> taken a dramatic turn for the worst. All right. I'm sorry, dude. That's just cur that's quick Pokemon news for you guys. Go. Six out of six beers of that book. Nine. Six out of six. God, damn. Damn. That was great. We got a lot of ones and sixes. I told you. We, you guys remember at the beginning of this episode? <laughs> Negative Nellies all around. Look at this. Energy's oh up god. and happy. Oh my god, that was and You can be a negative Nelly. I think I'll be a negative Nancy. Yeah, you are Nancy. <laughs> and I'm a whoa Nelly. Oh my god. Alright guys, that was a comic book look. I think it'd be more as a uh, Sharon. 
This is We Are Your Weekly TV Show on Comics. You can find us at a comic book look at gmail. Or you can't find us there. Send us your information at comic book look at gmail. Com. Mm. Comic book look Facebook. Search us. Mm. Twitter, comic book look, oh, John on YouTube. demand, uh, YouTube, a comic book look, and of course, every Wednesday, pick up your new comics, then get over to imjnation.com and veteran media junkies. That's where we're gonna be, and uh, hopefully, we see you guys again next yeah. week. And here's here's the emails that we want at comicbooklook at gmail.com. What is your favorite comic book character item? And we still haven't opened the Robin Polly bag. Time. Yeah, that's coming what up. The fuck? Maybe next week. That'll come up. Maybe. Comic book hero items. Let's hear about it. All right. Comic book hero items. Well, you guys know the drill as always. Get back to us. Play those explicit Game Boy games. Have fun with it. Send us some witty jokes. Love mail, hate mail. We love you. Comic book look. Keep it comics. <laughs> totally lost. You guys are so ridiculous. Love mail.